One gun to rule them all. Is it possible? Can we find one gun and cartridge for all of our hunting? I think we probably can. Actually, we can find several, but today I want to cover one that might surprise you, and I think it's going to handle pretty much any big game hunting you want to do short of dangerous game in Africa. And the cartridge is, ta-da, the 7mm Remington Magnum. <laughs> now, some people are going to laugh at that and say, that's not big enough. But others are going to say, that kicks too much. It's more than I need. Well, you've got to make a compromise if you want one cartridge to rule them all. And we're going to cover that today on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Now, before we get into the ballistics of the 7 Remington Magnum, I want to discuss the rifle that I have it chambered in right here, because I consider this to be a pretty good option for one rifle to rule them all, regardless what you chamber it in. And it looks pretty simple. It's pretty sleek. It's got your basic black stock. We'll get into that in detail here in a bit. And doesn't look like it's anything special, but it really is, because this rifle was built by a mechanical engineer who once worked for a Fortune 500 company. In his spare time, he was a bench rest shooter. And he was so good at it that he won, or he set, 10 national records for accuracy groups. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame for bench rest shooters. The guy really knew his stuff. Well, he got tired of working for a big company. He started his own gun making company. And this is one of the products Jim Borden makes. Borden Rifles Timberline. He makes several actions. This one, the Timberline, is a standard length action. That means it's the 30-06 length cartridges of which the 7 rem mag and even the 300 win mag are. So you easily fit in the standard length. It is a classic push feed bolt action. Notice how smooth that bolt is. I mean, it is just buttery smooth. And one of the things you get with someone like Borden, who's an engineer, is precision. He's the kind of guy that goes 0.0001 tolerances on things. Yet, he's got some spiral fluting on this bolt, which helps out in the field with mud and dirt getting on there. They fall into those flutes and can strip away. Shaves a little uh, weight off the rifle, but that's not the really big part. It's just amazing, though, the way these rails are so slick and perfectly smooth that this just glides like it's on butter. Nice feature. Now, an action is an action, and he's got these things incredibly square and straight, and that's what they call blueprinting in action, and he has, of course, to make those straight to keep them concentric with the barrel, and the barrel is the next big critical part in the accuracy of any rifle. This is the heart barrel, a number three contour, not too heavy, not too light, good all-round hunting. It's a 26-inch barrel, but there's two inches up front that's not rifled, and he's got his muzzle brake on there, so you're really working for ballistics with a 24-inch barrel, which is just about right for a 7 rem mag. Now that 26 inch barrel makes this a little bit of a compromise for woods hunting because that's going to get in the way. But if you're mostly hunting big open country, tundra, out west, pronghorn country, mule deer, I think it's worth, uh, worth carrying around as a little bit of a sacrifice. If you're going to be shooting big volumes of powder like the 7 rem mag has, you need at least 24 inches of barrel. So if you wanted, you could pick this thing up without a muzzle brake and you might be happier. But there's your, there's your option. So what makes this, in addition to those two features, so accurate? And we'll get to the accuracy shooting here in a little bit on my targets. Well, it's the bedding system with this ordinary looking stock, which is really not an ordinary stock. This is no cheap molded plastic. This is a Macmillan hand-laid fiberglass Kevlar carbon fiber stock. State of the art, definitely. And it is precision bedded with aluminum pillars. There are two points of contact here, floating the barrel so it doesn't touch the stock, yet bedding it perfectly level so there's no torque applied to the action when you tighten it down. In other words, the bedding is flat here in the front and the back straight across. One's not higher than the other. Jim just, just insists on a, a superior bedding job. And because it is slim as it is, as you can see through here, and in the grip, it's pretty darn slim. It's got a nice a cheek piece, and that helps 
keeps good contact for a good cheek weld, but also gives you a nicely full rounded comb so you don't get cheek slap. You don't get that bite under recoil that some sharp combs will give you. That is about it. You got a, I think a Packmeyer recoil pad. No, this has got Borden's own name on it. I'll be darned. And you can see that it's got good cushion, but not excessive and not like some of these big, thick, spongy ones these days. This thing doesn't bite at all. With that muzzle brake on there, it's just a pretty tame little shooter. I'd say it's a little less recoil than if it were chambered in a 270 without a muzzle brake. So that's the rifle. Um, it, it just kind of mystifies me. I sit here and I think I need to tell you a bunch of things, but really it's just that simple. It's, it's so well made and so precise that it does its job without a lot of fluff and stuff. So let's set up the uh, chronograph and the targets and let's just see how well it shoots with some uh, factory ammunition I've got here. I don't have any hand loads built up for it, but any rifle that can shoot factory loads pretty accurately is probably going to be deadly with customized hand loads. Let's just see what it'll do. Well, it's been a long time since I shot this rifle, so I'm not sure where it's zeroed or for what load. But what I want to try is the Barnes Vortex LRX. This is a 139 grain bullet. I would consider it just about ideal for whitetail, mule deer, sheep. It's not going to have the ballistics coefficient you would with, say, 168 grain, 175, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I better not stick another one in it because I want to just do three shots, and I've already got three down. So let's see how it shoots. I'm gonna guess it's shooting pretty high, but we'll soon find out. The box is claiming about 3,200 feet per second. Oh, that's mild. Yeah, it's high. One, two, about two, two and a quarter inches high, shooting a little bit left. The chronograph says 3,375 feet per second. That's smoking. And that's why. About <clears throat> half inch or maybe away from the previous shot. If that, 3,300 feet per second. Yeah, that's nice and consistent for factory ammo. like that opened it up to about an inch pretty much straight straight across line nice little group 3341 so I'm gonna go uh, get my average off of that write it on the box here for, for factory ammunition this thing is shooting quite nicely wouldn't have any trouble hunting with this thing out to 500 yards and very seldom I shoot anything that's 500 yards away out to 400 yards easy peasy yeah nice little group you. Be right back. According to the box, at 5,000 feet, we should be shooting 3,200 feet per second. So this guy is actually shooting quite a bit faster. And there you see you've got your energy. Yeah, pretty good, almost 3,200 foot-pounds of energy. And look at how far out it keeps at 500 yards. You're still over 17. 600 yards, you're over 15. A lot of guys think you need that for elk. I don't find it a thousand foot-pounds of energy applied to an elk with a bullet like this is going to let him walk off but a lot of people like to know those numbers so you're good out to 600 yards 700 yards you still got 1300 i'll bet at a thousand you still have a thousand foot-pounds of energy great load well that was pretty nice my next load i'm going to try another barnes lrx only this is a heavier 168 grains this is what i would choose to minimize my wind drift anytime you get your ballistics coefficient up higher with a longer bullet that's heavier you're going to minimize the deflection in the wind so that's what this one would be uh designed for i do not know what they're going to recommend on this this was a kind of a custom hand load from the custom shop so we'll just find out how fast it's going, but gal, I would think it'd be getting 2,900 to 3,000 feet per second, probably. About to find out, we'll do them onesies. Yeah, I'll find myself a new aiming point on that target. Oh, straight up an inch, just about on the line, so. No, uh, no windage problem on that one. Now if old Jim Borden were here, he could show me how to shoot a group. Oh, 
touching. I don't think you can shoot much better than that, Jim. <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> you can. <laughs> but this feels pretty good to me, Jim. Wow. <sighs> oh man, that's nice. I think I've got my hunting load right here. 2783 on that one. We'll go check out that chronograph and see what we've got. Now let's review here. First, uh, we got a duplicate. Duplicate, what? Okay, high, 2783. A little slower than I thought it was going to be, but boy, for that accuracy. 2743, what's our average? 2769, it's pretty hard to get an average with just three shots, but 2770, 2780, 27. Okay, right about in there. I'll work with these some more. Um, seems a little bit slow to me. Maybe I'll make some hand loads with the same bullet, but boy, that rifle sure likes them. Well, for my final load, I want to test this Winchester ammo. It's got the um, Nosler long range Acubons, and this is 168 grain. So again, we're going to have a pretty high ballistics coefficient in this load. This has proven to be a darn good bullet, but only if you can load it into the magazine first. Fat fingers, let's go. All right, if I have one complaint about this rifle, this is it. That second round wants to roll over and get against the sidewall and it's hard to shove it in. There you go. Minor point, but a point. All right, Winchester, let's see how fast you go and how accurately you plunk them in there. Yeah, let's go over to that side. Yeah, that one went quite a bit higher. A lot higher than that Barnes load. Almost three inches up. Uh-oh, I hit the same hole again. <laughs> Tell you, this rifle shoots. Just out about a, oh, maybe a half inch. We'll go down and look at them up close and personal, but not gonna miss any big animals with that or even any little ones. Yeah, we'll check those targets in the 2,900 feet per second, yeah. I think I could probably get that uh, Barnes bullet going a little bit faster. That's the most accurate so far, but man, I've got three good loads to work with here. So um, let me get this all wrapped up. We'll look at the target and then uh, we'll talk about the ballistics on this seven rem mag and why I think it's a do-all cartridge for pretty much world use. Well, here's not a bad sign, is it guys? So here was my first group I was aiming here and then 139 grain LRX, not bad. You know, you take that with most rifles, but boy, you go to that 168 and bingo. Nice ragged hole right there. That's a quarter inch or less probably. And then I get up to the uh, Acubon long range and First two go in that hole, second one's just a smidgen out, under a half inch again. That is an impressive rifle. I told you this Borden knew how to shoot, and he knows how to build rifles that shoot. Borden Timberline Custom 7mm Remington Magnum. Let's go talk a little bit about why I like the ballistics of that 7mm. Hey, I said I was going to cover the 7mm Remington Magnum ballistics. But I think I'm going to do that in a separate video because there's so much detail. This cartridge has been around a long, long time and it's done some remarkable work. So why don't we wrap this one up, the Borden Timberline Rifle Review, and then I'll put together a review of the 7mm Remington Magnum and its ballistics and its history on another video. Meanwhile, I am inviting you to subscribe to this channel, and of course you can find me on ronspomeroutdoors.com, our website. We're now doing podcasts, Ron Spomer Outdoors, and you can find those on most of your podcatchers. And also something new is Patreon. If you would like to be a patron of the arts, <laughs> if you consider what I do art, you can join us with the Patreon app. So look up 
P-A-T-R-E-O-N, Patreon, and check out how you can be a supporter of Ron Spomer Outdoors so we can continue to deliver this sort of content for your benefit. Thanks.